Welcome to the Roman Empire a force that reshaped the ancient world and whose greatest conquest transformed not only the empire itself, but set the foundation for the Western world as we know it. Today on History for Everyone will explore Rome's most decisive conquest, a conquest that brought the mighty Greek world under its rule and sparked a cultural revolution that would change history. It's a story about ideas, culture, and the fusion of two of history's greatest civilizations. Stick with us. You won't want to miss how this ancient conquest continues to impact our lives today. Our story begins in the early days of Rome, a small, modest city-state along the Tiber River in central Italy. By 500 BCE, Rome was surrounded by powerful neighbors, the Etruscans to the north, Greek colonies in the south, and other Latin tribes. Then it was a city forged in conflict. Rome had little choice but to fight to prove itself, and it quickly developed a reputation for its military discipline and fierce resilience. By the end of the 16th century BCE, Rome had solidified its control over most of Italy, but the Romans were hungry for more. Their ambitions stretched far beyond the Italian peninsula. They were looking to dominate the entire Mediterranean basin. Rome's first true test came not from the Greeks, but from Carthage, a powerful city-state in North Africa. Carthage controlled a vast empire and had a formidable navy, which gained control over crucial trade routes. This rivalry would lead to the Punic Wars, a series of epic conflicts that would span more than a century. The Punic Wars and Rome's dominance in 264 BCE. The first Punic War erupted over control of Sicily. What began as a territorial dispute quickly escalated into a full-blown war with both sides suffering heavy losses. After two decades of brutal naval battles and skirmishes, Rome emerged victorious, taking Sicily and marking its first major step towards an empire. But Carthage was not ready to surrender its power. In 268 BCE, the legendary Carthaginian general Hannibal Barca struck back in what would become the Second Punic War, leading an army that included war elephants. Hannibal crossed the Alps, a feat considered impossible at the time. Hannibal's campaign was devastating for Rome for nearly two years. He ravaged the Italian countryside, winning battle after battle. His victories at places like Lake Trasimene. And came with some of the most crushing defeats Rome had ever suffered. Yet, despite the devastation, Rome refused to surrender. In a remarkable turn of strategy, Roman general Scipio Africanus decided to take the fight to Carthage itself. In 202 BCE, he defeated Hannibal at the Battle of Zama. Forcing Carthage to sue for peace, the Second Punic War ended, and Rome was now the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean. With Carthage subdued, Rome's ambitions now turned eastward toward Greece, the cradle of Western civilization. But Greece was no ordinary conquest. Greece had been the patchwork of city-states, each fiercely proud of its independence. Greece was home to some of history's greatest minds and achievements, from Athens, the birthplace of democracy, to Sparta. Known for its military discipline, Greek philosophy, art, and science had set standards for the ancient world. By the time Rome turned its gaze east, Greece had already experienced the Golden Age, followed by the rise and fall of Alexander the Great's empire. His empire fractured, and Greece became divided among warring factions. Rome's entry into Greece began as an ally to certain Greek city-states against the Macedonian kingdom, which was seeking to control all of Greece. Rome's intentions became clear. It was not here to play the role of ally but of conqueror. The Macedonian wars between Rome and the Greek states spanned decades, with each victory bringing Rome closer to total control. In 168 BCE, the Battle of Pydna sealed Greece's fate. Roman legions crushed the Macedonian phalanx, and the once mighty kingdom of Macedonia fell under Roman rule. But Rome's conquest of Greece wasn't completed until 146 BCE, when it decisively crushed the Greek resistance at Corinth. The city was destroyed. Its treasures taken, and Greece was brought under Roman control. Rome's victory over Greece was more than just a military triumph. It marked the beginning of a cultural transformation that would have far-reaching consequences. The Cultural Revolution. Greece meets Rome after conquering Greece. Rome's generals brought back more than spoils of war. They returned with Greek art. Literature and philosophy. Greece's cultural influence began to seep into every corner of Roman life. The elite of Roman society became captivated by Greek culture. Wealthy Romans began to send their children to study under Greek tutors. They devoured Greek philosophy and literature, drawing inspiration from works by Homer, Plato, and Aristotle. Even the Roman religion began to shift as Greek gods. And myths were integrated into the Roman pantheon. Jupiter, Juno, and Venus, names familiar to us today, were Roman adaptations of Greek deities like Zeus, Hera, and Aphrodite. This blending of religious practices helped unify the cultures of the empire. Greek thought shapes Roman governance, but the most profound influence Greece had on Rome was in the realm of thought. Greek philosophy. 
especially Stoicism, had a major impact on Roman governance and law. Roman leaders such as Cicero and Marcus Aurelius adopted Stoic principles emphasizing virtue, duty and justice. These ideas became foundational in the governance of the Roman Empire helping to shape Roman law and policy. The Stoic belief in the universal order and the importance of reason resonated deeply with Roman ideals. Greek influence helped the Romans develop a more sophisticated legal system. Roman law known for its principles of fairness and equality, was an adaptation of early customs influenced by Greek philosophy. Concepts such as natural law, and the rights of the individual were born from this fusion of Greek and Roman ideas. These legal principles didn't die with the Roman Empire. They were preserved and evolved over centuries laying the groundwork for Western legal systems including those in Europe and the Americas. The lasting legacy of Rome's conquest of Greece Even after the fall of Rome, the legacy of Greek and Roman ideas endured. During the Middle Ages, knowledge of Greek and Roman philosophy was preserved by scholars in the Islamic world and later rediscovered during the Renaissance in Europe. This rediscovery sparked a revival of learning, art, and exploration. Renaissance thinkers look back to the works of Greek philosophers. Renaissance thinkers were inspired by the achievements of ancient Greece and Rome studying Greek texts and Roman laws. Artists like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci drew from classical forms, while scientists and philosophers sought to build upon the knowledge that had come from these ancient societies. The Renaissance was not just a rebirth of art and science, it was a revival of the Greek and Roman intellectual legacy that Rome had once conquered and integrated. Even beyond the Renaissance, the ideas of ancient Greece, filtered through the lens of Roman conquest and governance continue to influence the world. Enlightenment thinkers look to Greek concepts of democracy and Roman ideals of republicanism as the debated government and individual rights. These ideas lay the foundation for the modern democratic systems we see today from the United States to many European nations. So as we look at the core values of many modern governments justice, equality before the law, and civic responsibility we can trace much of this back to Rome's conquest of Greece. This conquest wasn't just about land, it was about a transfer of ideas that would echo through history. How Greek and Roman culture blend in today's world. Architecture is perhaps the most visible reminder of how Rome's conquest of Greece left a lasting impact. The column stones and arches that defy so many of today's government buildings and cultural institutions are direct descendants of Greco-Roman architecture. Education bears the legacy of this ancient fusion. Many Western educational systems include Greek and Roman literature, philosophy and history as foundational studies, offering insight into ethics, governance, and the human condition. And then there's language in English and many other Western languages contain countless words and expressions rooted in Latin and Greek. Legal scientific and medical terminology is heavily influenced by these ancient languages. A testament to the long-lasting power of Greco-Roman culture, Greek and Roman political ideas like democracy, republicanism, and the rule of law are the foundation of many modern systems of governance. Rome took the democratic principles of the Greek city-states, adapted them and then spread these concepts throughout its empire. These ideas inspired future leaders from Thomas Jefferson to Mahatma Gandhi, proving the timelessness of Greece's influence on Rome and Rome's influence on the world. Why the conquest of Greece is considered Rome's greatest conquest? Rome's conquest of Greece is often considered its greatest conquest not because of the territory gained but because of the knowledge and culture absorbed. Unlike other territories, Greece changed Rome as much as Rome changed Greece. Many conquests leave a one-sided legacy. But in Greece, Rome found an intellectual equal. This conquest created a fusion, a synergy that would give birth to new ways of thinking and living. In a way the Roman Empire's true legacy was not just in governance or military might, but in its willingness to adopt and adapt the best ideas of other cultures. Without the Greek influence on Rome, the Roman Empire may have remained just another powerful state. Instead it became a center for learning philosophy, an innovation that inspired countless generations. What Rome and Greece mean for us today? Today, we can see how the relationship between Greece and Rome continues to shape our world. When Rome conquered Greece, it took on more than just territory. It absorbed ideas that would form the basis of what we now call Western civilization. This conquest was the spark that lit a cultural fire one that still burns today. From democracy to philosophy, from art to architecture, the legacy of Rome's greatest conquest surrounds us. It's in the buildings where our laws are made, in the literature we cherish, and in the values that underpin our society. This is the legacy of Rome's greatest conquest, 
a blend of Greek and Roman words that changed the course of history forever. So next time you see a courthouse with tall columns, read about an influential philosopher or take part in a democratic election. Remember, these moments are echoes of a time when Rome conquered Greece and the world was forever transformed.